Marseille is the most important city in Provence, situated on the south coast of France. France's oldest city, the first settlement here was founded by some Greek emigrants in 600 BC. They named it Massalia. From a distance, one of Marseille's main landmarks rises high above the harbour, the seafarer's church of Notre Dame de la Garde. With abundant furnishings of the interior, Byzantine arches, golden mosaics and numerous votifs, a triumphant structure inspired by Byzantine Romanic design. The church resembles a fortress. From here, there's a fascinating view across an endless sea of houses. It was France's gateway to Africa. The old harbour was the original heart of the city. The first harbour of the Greek settlers who came here served as a gateway to Asia Minor. They were followed by the Romans. At the time of the Crusades, the harbour flourished once more, and the city's hectic trade during the times of French colonisation attracted many new settlers. Alas, the golden age of trade is long gone. But in the early morning, the fish market is still full of life on the Quai des Beiges. Two mighty fortresses overlook the harbour. The French king, Ludwig XIV, the Sun King, ordered the building of the fortress. He required the finest protection for his largest and most revered harbour. The most impressive religious building in Marseille is a fortified monastery church that dates back to the 5th century, the mighty Abbe Saint-Victor. Deep down in the rock is an early Christian crypt and a number of stone sarcophaguses that contain the remains of various holy martyrs that date back to the Roman persecution of the Christians. From outside, the Cathedral de la Mer is almost like a domed mountain, reminiscent of Notre Dame de la Garde. This rather ostentatious church building of Romanic Byzantine design was built on the foundations of a baptistry that dates back to the 5th century. This triumphal arch is located close to the Saint Charles station the dead of both the French Revolution and the French Empire are honoured here. The Palais de Longchamp, the flamboyant palace of Second Empire design. A semicircular building with a double row of ionic arcades and a large monumental fountain complex with stepped water features. Stone busts and ancient figures lead into a well-arranged park above the buildings. And there's even a small zoo. It was the terminal of an 80 kilometer long canal that supplied Marseille with the waters of the Durance. The architects of the 19th century knew well how to combine historic abundance with modern techniques. An imperial work of a golden age. When visiting Marseille, it's good to experience one of the boat trips that travels to a small island that lies just off the coast. 
The Chateau d'If, the most famous of many small islands that lie just off the coast. Close to the shore indeed, but once much feared. The fortress extended across the entire island. Its steep walls ended in the sea. The building was impregnable. Due to its unique location, the complex was soon transformed into a prison for both Protestants as well as political prisoners. Escape from here was impossible. The tiny island was made famous due to the novel by Alexander Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo. The ferry boat brings new visitors to the island and returns to the mainland, to liberty. Cassis is a charming fishing village with a picturesque harbour that is typical of the Mediterranean. With the colourful and neatly laid out houses located along the quay, it's easy to understand why it's so popular with the inhabitants of Marseille. A boat trip from Cassis leads to one of the most beautiful coastal areas in Europe, Les Calanques, a unique nature reserve. Shining white limestone cliffs plunge more than 400 meters into the deep blue sea, and they extend for 20 kilometers. The crystal clear, emerald green water of the bays is a marvelous sight, an idyllic and restful setting. The journey along the impressive mountain road is an unforgettable adventure. The Corniche de Crete travels 17 kilometers along the coast, high above the Calanque. French artist Paul Cézanne once created a famous and historic painting of this special paradise. The views across the azure blue coastline of the steep Calanque and the mountain world of Provence are truly remarkable. Hot springs once inspired the Romans to settle in a valley below the Celtic Oppidon that they had just destroyed. However, today's Aix-en-Provence and its numerous lanes offer far more and is one of the most beautiful cities in France. There is no other building in the city that unites as many historical styles and epochs than Saint Sauveur Cathedral. The diversity of the architecture is particularly evident within the interior of this church. The oldest part of the church, the 5th century Baptisterium, with its eight Roman columns, is a reminder of early Christian times. Fontaine de Vaucluse, a medieval town in Aix-en-Provence, where the depths of the spring of the river Sorgue are unexplored. Bridges span the shining green river, and these water wheels are relics of an age when weaving mills and dye houses were powered by the water. The 
journey continues through green forests and tree-lined roads, through the landscape of the Luberon. Many artists travel to Gord. Half a century ago, this mountain village was almost deserted. But today it has a population of 2,000, and both Victor Vassarelli and André Lotte once lived and worked here. The stone buildings seem to have been built to last forever. The architecture encapsulates the historic character of Provence. A region with a colourful past. A picture postcard village set high above the Coulon Valley, with a panoramic view across a fascinating landscape that has inspired many an artist. Close to the village is an open-air museum These round huts have been built in the shape of barrels and are known as boris, consisting of a mound of rocks and without any use of mortar. A few kilometers north is the location of the ancient Notre Dame de Senac monastery. A place of silence amid blossoming and strongly scented fields of lavender. It is one of the last three remaining Cistercian monasteries in Provence, where travellers could break bread, sup water and have a bed for the night. Twelve men from Vivarais and an abbot originally founded the monastery. This corresponds to Jesus and his 12 apostles. Today, six monks still live here. Shining natural color helped to make this village located on the hills north of God famous. Roussillon, with its colorful abundance of ochre. Prehistoric man painted caves with it and the Romans mined it and used it in the production of ceramics and cosmetics. Ochre is created by a combination of alumina and ferric oxide. Its resultant color varies according to the proportion of these elements, from light yellow to rusty red. A very special plant grows within this sunny hill landscape. Lavender was used by the Romans as an antiseptic and in today's perfume industry, lavender oil is a vital ingredient in a large variety of products. The climate in the south of France makes vineyards and fields of corn and sunflower stand out from the surrounding landscape. Everything seems to glow in the bright colors of Van Gogh. Bonnieur is the Mont Saint-Michel of Provence. As this prosperous mountain village was Catholic, it was the only village that was never attacked or plundered. Sur le Pont d'Avignon Thus begins the world-famous French song that is familiar to both young and old alike. It is a song of dance on the bridge of the Pont saint benezé But it's more likely that the people here once danced under the bridge, as that is the location of the bars. The impressive Pope's Palace dominates the centre of the town. On the outside, it resembles a military fortress rather than a religious residence. Internal disputes, in addition to power struggles in Rome, transformed Avignon into the new seat of the pontificate. Only with the Great Plague of 1721 and the following French Revolution did the controversy come to an end. Various of Caesar's veterans settled in Orange, 
with all the comforts of a Roman town, circus, capital, thermal baths and numerous temples. The Theatre Antique is a splendidly preserved theatre with a huge stage, excellent acoustics and seating for 10,000. Pont du Gard, the most famous section of the water route to Nîmes that was built by the Romans 2,000 years ago. A bridge-like aqueduct. Each day, 20,000 cubic meters of fresh water flowed at a height of 49 meters across the uppermost row of arches. Nîmes, or Nimausas as the Romans called their colony, developed into an important center. For almost 2,000 years, an imposing Roman amphitheater has dominated the city of Nîmes. In bygone times, bloody gladiatorial battles took place in the arena. But today, it is matadors and bulls. The temple Maison Carré's excellent state of repair stems back to a time when it was transformed into a church and thus spared from destruction by the Christians. The Baroque garden with its rich array of sculptures dates back to the 18th century when the city enjoyed much prosperity. A beautiful fountain graces the Place de la République in the heart of Arles, an historic and charming small town in the south of France. The cathedral's atmospheric cloister is regarded in Provence as an architectural gem of Romanic art. The amphitheatre is the region's greatest building that has survived from the time of the Roman Empire. It is also the most important arena in the former Gallic colony. The town is closely associated with the name of a world-famous Dutch painter, a man highly underrated in his own lifetime, Vincent van Gogh. His work is now world-famous and has survived the passage of time. The Langlois drawbridge became the Pont van Gogh, a world-famous motif of the great Grand Master. The unique landscape of the Camargue is relatively young. The region along the Rhone Delta that developed in the Quaternary period enjoys a good degree of sunshine. A number of the region's inhabitants are as famous as the landscape of the south of France, such as the famous white horses of the Camargue. The wild vegetation and natural swampland known as the Etang are essential breeding places for millions of birds. Flamingos are one of the region's most colorful indigenous birds. The pink of their feathers is due to the high consistency of brack in the water. While various endangered bird species are protected in the Camargue's ornithological park, large numbers of birds fly overhead. Entertainment is also well catered for here, as a small train travels through a huge area that features each of the region's animals. It could be called Disneyland à la Camargue. This fertile, often flooded land has been used for agriculture since the Middle Ages. Thus, in addition to rice and wine, it also contains forests. And herds of bulls also enjoy the shade of the area's willow trees.
The fascinating Parc Ornithologique contains plants and many rare and colorful birds that were once to be seen throughout the whole of France. A journey by boat reveals the full beauty of the landscape. Both natural and artificial canals travel through the tributaries of the Rhône. One of the most well-preserved medieval fortifications in Europe surrounds the small town of Aigues Mortes along the western periphery of the Camargue in the south of France. The 1700 metre long town wall of Aigues Mortes consists of 10 gates and 5 defensive towers, a true masterpiece of medieval architecture. In the 13th century, King Louis the Holy was in search of a suitable location for a harbour on the Mediterranean that would serve both trade and military purposes. The former village of both fishermen and shepherds, Saint-Marie-de-la-Mer, is located in the center of the Camargue. Each year, numerous gypsy families gather here. The city boasts a large yacht harbor and long sandy beaches. And the bullfights draw huge crowds of visitors. For as long as can be remembered, the delta of the river Rhone has been used for the production of sea salt. And Salin de Giraud is the centre of this industry. Roads built on dams separate the numerous salt fields that look like a shining white desert. A colourful picture beneath the scorching sun. With a system of bucket wheels, around 80 million cubic meters of water are pumped from the sea into an ingenious system of canals. The water evaporates and salt deposits are collected from the fields with modern machinery. In the 10th century, Benedictine monks settled in the marshlands of the Rhone Delta and founded the Abbé de Montmajour. A winding mountain road leads into the undulating inland, up to the Moulin de Doudet. The romantic medieval village of Les Beaux de Provence is situated on a rocky plateau surrounded by the charming mountain landscape of Provence. During the Middle Ages, this small town became a center of power, while the corrupt owners of its castle ruled over most of the province. Steep steps lead up to the plateau, where today only the ruins of a once huge castle are to be found. Medieval siege machines are reminders of earlier battles and wars. Now, only a few remnants remain. The ruins blend with the natural white limestone rock of the high plains. A place of radiant light and sweet aromas. Villages that nestle in the rocks like an eagle's nest and cities with an historic past. All this is typical of the sunny south of France. Provence, a captivating land full of fascinating contrasts.